Hello. I want to talk about our human perceptions and how we often have a distorted view of reality and and the world around us and how this distortion leads to a pathway of denial of the reality that we're living in and this leads to a self-created loop of anxiety, concern, worry, suffering and that also steers us away from gaining wisdom from that situation. I recently attended a workforce shortage forum and that was to do with vets leaving the industry and the expert panel was actually talking about how we can keep veterinarians within the industry and whilst the factors that they talked about were based around paying vets more money, helping them to achieve a better work-life balance, helping them to feel supported in their environment, whether they're an employer, employee, um, also the ability to advance their career. Whilst these are all valid, they're not new and we can actually pick all of these factors up and put them into any job, business or industry. They're universal factors. They're also superficial because despite those factors and veterinary surgeries working to provide those things for their veterinarians, the suicide rate among veterinarians remains. We have also the teaching of ethics in veterinary colleges which are specifically designed to help veterinary students who are humans to be able to identify and understand and and detect ethical and moral dilemmas that they're going to be encountering in their daily life as a veterinarian. And those ethical dilemmas can certainly range from having to euthanise an animal that may have an ulcerated tumour that's been there for six months, but the unconscious nature of the human that is the owner of that animal that has been suffering with that tumour means that that human hasn't hasn't actually brought their animal in to receive appropriate medical care at an appropriate time. And so we can see a disconnection from that animal, from, from, from the human with their animal, their companion animal, because they lack a true empathy and compassion for that animal. And this is reciprocated back to vets because... Veterinarians are then obviously in a a moral and ethical dilemma because they can't provide the appropriate treatment that they would like to provide in order to alleviate the suffering of that animal. But teaching ethics and uh, morals is very limited because it's restrictive in itself. Ethics and morals are based, based around codes of conduct, specific codes of conduct or moral principles. And furthermore, the veterinary science field is further limited and restricted by the science that is actually burdening veterinarians and the veterinary industry and continuing that distorted perception of reality, the true reality, and continuing us down that path of denial and self-created suffering, which is increasing and broadening not just for veterinarians but also reciprocated to the humans that have companion animals and also the billions of animals that are bred into existence that are enduring short or long lives depending on what species they are in order to be slaughtered to feed dogs, cats and humans. And so whilst that on superficially that might seem like a good thing, um, what what we're doing is we're still teaching veterinary students to become veterinarians that are better at being unconscious. And we also see charities now that have been founded to help with mental health issues for veterinarians. And of course, mental health is a very, very complicated and broad topic. Veterinarians are humans and they may actually suffer from mental conditions and diseases like bipolar syndrome and things like that. Or they may have underlying anxieties that were there before they were a veterinarian. They may have underlying anxieties that result from being in the daily life or or having the daily life or as a result of becoming a veterinarian. But despite, as I mentioned, these charities and also the vets working, the veterinary conglomerates that are working to provide better working conditions for veterinarians, despite the charities and the veterinary surgeries working towards this, the rate of veterinary suicide still remains. 
And it's interesting that this distorted perception of reality is also, and these partnerships, if you like, between the charities and also the partnerships where these conglomerates of veterinary practices are working in partnership with other companies, that also is leading us down to a distorted pathway of reality and increasing the suffering, not just of veterinarians, but also the humans that have commanding animals, as well as the animals themselves. When we consider that these partnerships are with multi-billion dollar pharmaceutical companies, multi-billion dollar pet food industries. And so despite the charities and the workforce shortage forums and the diligence of veterinary practices wanting to improve the lives of vets in both their personal and professional capacity, the suicide rate among veterinarians remains. So we're teaching veterinarians how to be better at being unconscious instead of actually teaching veterinarians and humans in general the ability to be able to align the science that they know to a higher intelligence and gain wisdom from that, but not only gain wisdom from that, but also have the courage to act consciously. And the courage, having the courage to act consciously means having the ability to act be able to separate your own suffering in that moment in quiet observation and observe that suffering but then be able to consciously take action in a way that is reducing not only the suffering of our our own suffering but also the suffering of veterinarians humans that have animals and also most importantly the animals that, themselves that are suffering by the very virtue of being imprisoned by humans and the veterinary science industry that is a huge laboratory experiment. Now, if we are truly able to align the suffering that we have as veterinarians or humans that have animals in, in their lives, then what we are able to do is we are able to have true empathy and compassion now, we hear all the time veterinarians saying, oh, I love animals and I'm passionate about the mental health and the physical health and, of, and well-being of animals. We hear humans that have animals in their life saying, I love my dog, I love my cat. Yet if we had true empathy and compassion for the very animals that we purport to want to take care of with respect to their mental health and physical health and well-being, then we would not have the continued and still have the continued genetic manipulation of dogs and cats. We wouldn't have the breeding crisis, which is leading to the shelter crisis, and we wouldn't have the continued breeding of brachycephalic breeds because we would understand that having true empathy and compassion means that the very nature of the industry itself is perpetuating the suffering of animals. When we talk about loving animals and we're talking about loving our dog or loving our cat, it's not measured in a meaningful way, whether we're a veterinarian saying that or a human that has a dog or a cat or any other animal that is in captivity, domesticated, or any other animal that's being bred into existence to be enduring short or long lives, to be slaughtered, to feed dogs and cats and humans. So when we see... When we see that this, the, the true reality where veterinarians are being taught to be better at being unconscious, we also see that veterinarians are better at teaching humans that have animals in their life to be unconscious as well. And we see this in the many television shows, whether they're based on emergency veterinarians or general practice veterinarians, where they have similar themes, similar scripted themes, where we might see an animal that's come in with a life-threatening illness and that animal has been saved and that's a wonderful thing. Or we have an animal that's been brought in that is needing an emergency caesarean because we need to save the puppies. So we see these 12 or 14 puppies have been brought into the world and that's a wonderful thing, yet we don't question the welfare of the dog that was actually forcibly impregnated to then birth these puppies that are going to be sold for thousands and thousands of dollars. And we don't actually question the welfare or think about the welfare of that dog that may actually be confined to 
a darkened environment without any mental stimulation, without any human contact, in isolation, specifically to be bred because that animal is seen as a way of making money. Similarly with a dog that was brought in with a life-threatening condition and that dog was saved. That dog may be sitting, may be sitting at home for 15, 16 hours of the day on their own with separation distress, with behavioural illness, with mental health issues. Yet the human who loves their dog brought that dog in at the very last minute, and that dog may have been sick for a number of months. It may have had an ulcerated tumour that was getting bigger and bigger and bigger and suffering from that dis-ease until there was no other way that that human could avoid it. But through that human's own unconsciousness and distorted perception of reality, they chose to let their animal suffer in that circumstance until they had no other choice but to bring their dog to an emergency, emergency veteran, veterinary setting. And so we also see veterinarians, and recently I saw on TikTok, for example, a veterinarian sitting at, at a type, pretending to type, and for comic relief was talking about how it was great that we could bring pets into our work to relieve stress and opened a drawer and a tiny kitten was in a drawer with manila folders. And this poor kitten was just picked up and thrust into the camera. This kitten was clearly terrified. But this veterinarian, this person that is passionate about animals, that loves animals, that is there to heal animals, has a fundamental disconnection with a basic concept of empathy and compassion. And so we see the true perception, the true reality, this lack of empathy, this basic lack of empathy and compassion is endured in the form of suffering by millions and millions of animals in thousands and thousands of veterinary surgeries every single day. And we might see that same veterinarian that might, we might see their website and, and see, oh, they're our trusted family veterinarian. But we are teaching veterinarians to be so good at being unconscious that they're even better at teaching humans that have animals in their lives to be just as unconscious. But there are glimmers of hope and there are glimmers of consciousness and awakenings that veterinarians are undergoing simply because of the suffering that they're enduring as a result of their profession. And that suffering is a breakthrough because what we're seeing now in the form of Vets Against Live Export, wildlife veterinarians and sanctuaries, vets for compassion, and also individual veterinarians, veterinary specialists, surgical specialists that are having the courage to speak up, to speak up against the breeding of brachycephalic breeds and other breeds that are inheriting such terrible, terrible deformities and exaggerated physical characteristics that they're having to undergo many, many operations just so they are able to function and survive during their daily life without undergoing stress, suffering because they're not unable to breathe. So when we see conscious breakthroughs like this within the veterinary industry, we also understand that it's not ethics that we should be teaching in veterinary colleges. The most core fundamental subject that should be taught in veterinary colleges is animal behaviour. Because with animal behaviour, we understand how behaviour is absolutely inherently intertwined with the emotional state of another living species. And when we understand that, we reconnect with that living species and we have a true empathy and compassion for that species. And then that means we take a step back and we actually see that our mouths will actually drop in the horror and the insanity and the madness of what the current industry really is. 
versus the perception and that distortion um, of what we think the industry and the word veterinarian means. And when we when we transform the veterinary industry, what we'll, we will be doing is we'll, we'll actually be seeing a collapse of the industry as we know it now and that industry giving way to one where we are seeing true preventive medicine and reducing the suffering of not just veterinarians but also humans that have animals in their life, animals that are being bred into existence just to be slaughtered and consumed, but most importantly, the companion animals that are enduring suffering every single day. We'll talk again soon.